There are many ancient ruins that were not only beyond the capabilities of the claimed creators, but we postulate were simply re-inhabited, allowing the far more primitive and we feel far more recent inhabitants to flourish, developing these sanctuaries, often heavily fortified temples, to a point where they were able to leave their own mark upon these locations. An archaeological legacy left after the original creators of said sites were seemingly wiped out, with their own archaeological legacies simply washed away by the seas of our planet. These remnants have allowed academia to simply disregard the feat of engineering such incredibly large sites would have required, pinning such efforts to a more suitable candidate. After researching many such sites, backed up by the megalithic accomplishments that they still possess, one will begin to notice a pattern an illogical and contradictory history for these groups, often invaded by a similarly capable and heavily studied group. The question is, why were a group who were apparently capable of building such a site so easily dominated by another which existed at the same era of history? One would have imagined that if they were indeed the builders of said sites, that they would have also been able to have created substantial defense systems Yet these are invariably absent from nearly all of these sites, with just the weather-resistant megaliths, and indeed the condition of the sites most probably very similar to how they are found today. And Chan Chan is no exception. Believed to have been constructed around 850 AD, based on archaeological finds, subsequently claimed as having been constructed by the Chimu. Although this explanation for the enormous site is conveniently absent any explanation as to how this society achieved such incredible feats of ancient engineering. It became the Chamur Empire's capital city, with an estimated population of 40 to 60,000 people when invaded by the Inca. After the Inca captured the Chamu around 1470 AD, Chan Chan was abandoned and by 1535 AD again became a ruin of history. Surviving into modern day and beyond, while no longer a teeming capital city, Chan Chan was still well known for its great riches and was consequently looted by the Spanish treasure hunters. With an indication of the creator's wealth seen in a 16th century list of items looted from a burial tomb, a treasure equivalent to 80,000 pesos of gold was recovered, nearly 5 million US dollars in gold. Incredibly intricate stone-cut engravings rest alongside massive fortified walls, and there is most likely many other tombs in the site, which not only predate this later re-inhabitation, but are probably also filled to the rafters with gold, an expression of these original creators' power, and again, contradictory to the Chamu's claim to such a site. Furthermore, Chan Chan is in a particularly arid section of the coastal desert of northern Peru, and due to the lack of rain in this area, the major source of non-salted water was in the form of rivers carrying surface runoff from the Andes. This runoff allowed for the control of land and water through irrigation systems. The city of Chan Chan spanned 20 square kilometers and had a dense urban center of 6 square kilometers. This contained extravagant ciudadelas, ciudadelas being the large architectural masterpieces which house plazas, storerooms, and burial platforms for the royals. Who were the original builders of Chan Chan? Were they, like we postulate, wiped out during a disaster? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. There are a number of artifacts found at varying parts of the world which, due to the immense age of the strata they were discovered within, fly in the face of current paradigms in regards to the chronology of man. Iron pots, zinc vases, even imprints of ancient chariot wheels, found in numerous coal seams and found by people in positions of responsibility, whom often testify not only in regards to their legitimacy but are often accompanied by the lump of coal in which they were found, still possessing the intriguing imprint upon their surface, undeniably supporting the testimonies of these individuals, all but proving authenticity beyond doubt. 
like that of the iron pot and its accompanying coal block, which was its tomb, carbon dating has indicated that the pot is an astonishing 300 million years old. However, as time goes on and coal mining, along with many other mining activities, becomes more rapid and advanced in nature, it is simply a matter of time before even more mysterious and unexplainable artifacts are also found. Unfortunately, due to the controversial nature of these artifacts, it is very likely that a number of them have either been shrugged off or actively destroyed before ever achieving widespread acclaim. However, fortunately, the next artifact of interest, just like that of the many others we have previously covered, can not only be seen as yet another smoking gun, indicating that there has been a number of advanced phases within human civilization, but yet again, this timeline could, in all possibility, date back an astonishing 300 million years. Although modern society has been taught that we are at the height of human accomplishments, many of these techniques we currently claim as our own accomplishments could have been achieved an unimaginably long time ago, far back within Earth's history. Dated to the same age as that of a number of other artifacts, which we have covered in the past, a group of brass doorknobs were once abandoned, eventually finding their way into a coal seam, which has been dated as 300 million year old geology. Found still encased within this ancient strata, these astonishing artifacts are undeniably of an incredible age. Unfortunately, and rather predictably, not much has been done in regard to mainstream investigation into said artifacts and their current location, if indeed still in existence, is unclear. Yet fortunately, before their disappearance, photographic evidence was taken, subsequently allowing us to add it to the volume of research and artifacts which not only support our posit of lost civilization, but place human activities an impressive 300 million years back into Earth's history. Who made these brass doorknobs? Could we really be a civilization hundreds of millions of years old? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling.